This tutorial will demonstrate installing Oracle NoSQL Database and then configuring Eclipse for use in developing Oracle NoSQL Database applications. The first step is to check that you have version 6 of Java SE installed. If you don't have a recent version of Java SE, you can download the latest version 6 update from the Oracle download page for Java SE. Here we have update 25. If you need to install Eclipse or install the latest version, you can obtain it from Eclipse.org. I will be using the classic version in this tutorial. Next, we download the latest version of Oracle NoSQL Database. I'm running on Linux, so I'll download the Community Edition tarball. I've created an Oracle NoSQL database directory, and notice the tarball is here, so let's expand it. This is really all there is to installation, and let's take a look at what's in the kit. There's a number of directories, a bin directory, a lib directory where there's a, a few jar files that we'll be using in just a minute. There's an examples directory, and we'll also be using one of the projects in that examples directory in the documentation and also source code. Let's bring up Eclipse and create a new Eclipse workspace. I'll call mine Oracle NoSQL Apps. I first confirm I have Eclipse pointing to the correct 1.6 version, and now I'm going to create a project called Hello Oracle NoSQL World. You can call it anything you want. There is more than one way to create an Eclipse project from a Java source file. I am creating a package named Hello, since that is what the package name is in the Hello World app. I will now import the source code from the examples directory of the Oracle NoSQL database kit that we previously installed. Go to the examples directory and we're going to import the contents of the hello directory. We'll just select everything. Click on finish and that will bring the source code into the project that we just created. Notice there are some errors because we have one more piece to do, which is to create the reference to the KV client jar file. So I'm going to add an external jar. Locate the lib directory. and select the key value jar file. And now all of the errors are clear. We now have our client application configured in Eclipse and ready to run against an instance of Oracle NoSQL database server. We are going to run on a special version of Oracle NoSQL database named KVLite. KV Lite is used to develop and test access to Oracle NoSQL databases. It's single process and not intended for production. 
It's a great way to learn the API and also to test your functional code on a single computer. Let's start KV Lite and confirm that it is running. If you're not sure what commands are available in the KV Store jar file, you can issue the following. And we're going to use the KV Lite command. If we wanted to get help on that, we could just specify help KV Lite. And notice the defaults here. Um, the name of the root directory is KV root. The store is KV store. Localhost is the default. Actually, in this case, it would be run virtual Ubuntu. And the admin port defaults to 5001. That's for the web based GUI. And the port at which you can communicate with KV Lite is 5000. So these are all the defaults. And when I bring up KV Lite, I'm going to take all the defaults. So it looks like I can just best try that. So notice what's echoed back here. The root is in fact defaulted to KV root. The store name is the default KV store. The host name, Ron Virtual Ubuntu, and the default ports for the administrator GUI is 5001, and the port to communicate with uh, KV Lite is 5000. Let's use another command now in the KV store jar file to determine if KV Lite is in fact up and running. I'm going to use the ping command. My host name and the default port that was used remember was 5000. Okay, so here we can we've confirmed this is one way there are several others to do this that KV Lite is up and running. Let's take our Oracle NoSQL database client application and create a debug configuration and run it. We'll stop in main. Let's take a look at one more thing. I'm going to look at the source code here and establish a breakpoint right on store.put. And I wanted to also note one more thing. Notice there is no Java doc for this method. Let's take care of that now. I'm going to browse and just take a look at the kit. So notice now that we do have the Java doc included for each of the methods, which is quite useful, as you all know. Let's try to run the application. And we've hit the first breakpoint. Let's just go ahead and run the application. And we're on the put method. Let's go ahead. And here we have the output, hello, big data world. So at this point now, we have run the client application and we have totally configured Eclipse. At this point, you're ready to 
dive into the code, maybe make some enhancements. Let's take a look at the getting started guide. First is the documentation, which is included in your kit, as I pointed out earlier. It's also available directly from the download link, and I'll show you that right now. Here's a link to the forum, which we'll see in just a second, and I'm going to click on the link to the documentation. And here's the documentation page. You can see that there's um, a quick start. There's also two useful getting started guides. Uh, one is for the administration activities and the other is for focused more on the API. A complete Java doc. Uh, a good thing to look at would be the release notes and change log so that you can see what changed between the various uh, versions of the product. I also wanted to show you the other uh, entry, the forum, and this is a great place to ask questions uh, if you have them. You also can learn a lot by searching or just looking at some earlier questions that have been posted.